Hey guys, how's everyone doing? So we are making this video today because so many of you have been asking us the same question. So we figured it's time that I put together a really good video instead of always having to ask the same questions and reply and not really knowing what you guys are really looking for. So the, the question that we're gonna be responding to today, which is quite broad, what harness do we suggest for Huskies? And this could also work for other dogs too. This is not just for Huskies. I'm gonna give them a treat really quick because they've been really well behaving after our long trail today. We had a long hike today and it was awesome. And then we're gonna continue the video. Okay, so there are two, two different types of harnesses that you'd be looking for. And both of them have their different uses. The harness number one, which is the least common, but it should be more common, is for exercise, for running, for pulling. That's specifically for Huskies and for other similar breeds that really love pulling and enjoy the exercise of, you know, really going out on the trail. That's one. But the other harness is really for everyday walking and for exercising your dog on a daily basis. And at that point, you want your pup to be by your side. That obviously goes into training, but using the right tools to achieve it is also important. And we've gone through so many harnesses, so many collars, so many leads over the years. And we don't feel like it's perfect, but we feel like we have now a pretty good system of how we exercise them and we have different harnesses for different uses you know if we want them to pull or if we want them to walk side by side because we want them we want to achieve both we like the pulling aspect because they have so much fun and that's only meant for the trails and only for real good exercise but the most important thing too is for any pup any dog to be able to walk by your side so I'm gonna be going over three of the harnesses we currently have one of them we use the most and you'll see why as we go through go through the video and the other ones are kind of like hmm and you'll see why when we go through the video too okay so with that being said let's look at harness number one harness number one is the rough wear and this, these are all worn. You can see how they're actually in, not in no longer in new condition. And that's what you really want to be addressing when they're not new. This is the front range of rough wear harness that's very popular. Let me check, where is my price? I had the phone somewhere. Okay, here it is. The price on this rough wear harness is $39.95 on Amazon. So it's close to $40. Now, the Roughway Harness is a front the front range style and what front range means is that it has something in the front that you can use and that is good for walking your dog close by your side. But here are the things about the rough the rough wear front range harness is one we left it on Kimari in the car for about I don't know for a 10 minute ride and she was able to chew right through this in seconds and that exposed a really weird sponge inside it and it didn't take much for her. I know that Huskies and dogs shouldn't really have their harness on. Usually she doesn't chew anything so I don't know why she did that and this is the second time she's done that so we've actually purchased a second one for her. This is the third one of hers because she's done it already the second time and at this point we're like you know what we're not buying her a new one when this tears a little bit more it's gonna be it, we're not gonna rebuy this particular harness. The nice things about this front range harness is that it has this cool little pouch, I'll try to open it, here, where you can store the dog ID. So here's Kimari's tag. You can store the dog ID inside it and it keeps it protected. But the downside is, is that if you have more than one pup, then you have to open this every time to look for the ID unless you choose to put the ID in the front here which is kind of like what's the point of this one if you're gonna have that over here the nice thing about another nice thing about the front range is that it has these adjustable straps on both sides so you can adjust these according to the size of your dog which is great but they do they do retain a lot of the hair on it and they also get pretty wet, which I think is common for most of them. This front range is pretty strong. We haven't really used it 
much on this aspect for the front clip, which we'll show you in a little bit how that's used. Kimari, you want a snack? Come here, baby, lay down. And when you go too far, okay? Good girl. You guys love the fruitables. You want one more? Here, good girl. One more. Don't forget there's a lot more fruitables here, okay? Good babies. So yeah, we haven't really used that a lot on, on this harness. It seems pretty strong though, the front range clip, which is on the chest, which is great. But the clip here, this is pretty new. I have to show you guys the other one because this harness is pretty new. So this one is uh, units or Titus's, I believe. This is what we use. We use the back harness a lot because we do run with them a lot. And as you can see, after about owning these for about seven, eight months, this most important element for the harness that you really depend literally on the life of your dog is unraveling. So this is unraveling, which means it probably has, depending on the strength of your dog, it has a life of maybe a year, this harness, because it, you know if it's gonna tear a little bit more, I'm not gonna trust it anymore to be safe for our pups. Here, one more treat. Good babies. The clips on it are good though. It's decent clips. Keeps it secure. And that's, that's a good part. They have different colors, which is nice. And I also like that Front Range didn't put the branding like super big here in the front. I don't really want to have these ginormous brands on me when we're, you know, we have the gear for our pups. They have a nice little label in the back that says rough wear. So that's, that's nice and it doesn't have huge branding and there's plenty of color choices. But overall, this is for 40 bucks. Would I buy it again? Probably not. Just uh, the price range and the quality, combining that with you know the way it, it tears here, which is the most important element. You know, for for huskies, I mean, if they're malamutes, this would be even more impactful because you literally depend on this small part here to have the whole harness in place and safe for your pup. But the concept of a front range harness, where it has that clip that I showed you guys earlier, this one is really really important and we'll go over more in detail when we actually show you how we use this how this front range is phenomenal when it comes to walking your pup and it's very dual use which is great but yeah you're looking at close to 40 bucks for this and some pros some cons but overall i think this is the last one of this kind that we'll own so once this wears a little bit more it's, uh, it's sort of done. So that's it for the Roughwear Front Range Harness. Now I'm gonna be talking more about the K9 Equipment Ultimate Pulling Harness. This runs at about $56, which is the priciest one that we're gonna be reviewing today. This has been worn for about six months on a Husky, so you get the reality of it, how it looks after wear. The pros of this harness first, really, really strong, super well built, amazing. The concept of this, how this is designed, is to be able to really support a dog when it's pulling, which is phenomenal. It's really, really great when it comes to running or you know, ski joring or bike joring, whatever you're doing, it really supports the dog. And why? Is because the pressure from the pulling comes from the chest. It's padded here in the front. It's got this great pad. And then the pressure around it goes here on the side and you apply this coupler here, one on each side, just like this. Coupler here, coupler there. And that is how it actually works when your Husky is pulling. It's phenomenal because you don't get the, you know, the choke on the neck when they're pulling. You don't get a lot of the problems that traditional harnesses do when you use it for pulling. So that is a huge plus. The other plus is, is the incredible comfort level. This is completely padded. The material is soft. It's overall just a great well-built harness. The clips are great, they're adjustable and it's all around really soft. So I think those are like the biggest ones. Oh, let's not forget this wonderful tool here on top. It's like a handle that you can grab your pup really quick if you need to and walk with your pup if you need to. It's, it's great and it's just all, all around really, really sturdy. 
Okay, so the cons of this harness though, I think one of them you can see right away. This. Honestly, I can't handle it. <laughs> I can't handle it and because of the material being, uh, what is it, like felt or something like that or fleece, the hair just never comes off and it being black, it's just, I can't. <laughs> we almost own nothing black in our house because no matter how much you groom it and how much you do all of that, black really shows fur. So I think this being in a different color would help, but I also think that the material can be soft and not be attracting that much hair, you know, and it would still be um, great. The other thing too is that the, uh, what is that? The reflector here is starting to break apart the reflection material. I don't know if there could be a better option for that, but it's great that it has reflection, like reflective for a night, but it's just starting to break over time. The other big pet peeve I have is these ginormous branded blue white letters on front of the chest. It doesn't need to be that exaggerated. Honestly, I think that the canine equipment in the back would have been sufficient. There's no need to put such a ginormous brand on a product that already costs so much. It's the most expensive one. So yeah, I think that that's completely unnecessary. The other thing too, the other con is obviously the cost. It's quite pricey for a harness, 56 bucks. I mean, if you have one pup, it's like it's doable, but pricey, you, I expect more from a, a harness that's that pricey. The other thing you can't really tell in this video, but it's quite a heavy harness. The weight is one thing, but when this gets wet, oh my God. And this is, if this is made for the outdoors, all these harnesses should be made for the outdoors. Then when these get, when these out of all three of the harnesses we were viewing, this just keeps the water because of the material. So you're really left with a soggy dog that just can't dry up and anything sticks to it, mud, you name it. So that makes it another con for this harness. Kind of wish it wouldn't have those cons because the other pros I mentioned before are phenomenal. So that's, that's another thing. And then of course it's lacking the front range aspect of it, which I think uh, would be wonderful because the front range really provides that versatility of being a pulling harness and also a walking by your side type of harness. So that's overall for the canine equipment harness. We haven't really used it much since we um, have this third harness that I'll be showing you, but I still think this is a really good harness. So we have this actually, this canine equipment harness always in the car in the back of our trunk as backup because we have done this stupid thing which i don't know if you guys have ever done is leaving you know by mistake leaving the harnesses and all the equipment in at home and you just jump in the car and then by the time you get to the trail or whatever you are you realize you have nothing so this is a great backup harness so we have that in the car but we really haven't used it since we have that new one so that's it for the canine equipment harness and we are going through our final harness that we have right now and i'll show you guys why we enjoy that harness the most okay guys so here's the last harness we're going to be reviewing today and i'm going to have to actually read it how it's pronounced and all that good stuff because it's a long name i found it on amazon after a bunch of research it's called s goda dog harness nylon with 3m reflective dog vest front range no pull harness harness with a handle that's a long name i saw a lot of good reviews and i i didn't really know if i should trust it especially given the price to be only around 25 dollars depending on the size that you get so that is the most affordable harness out of all three and surprisingly this turned out to be our favorite here is the third harness and so far has proven to be our favorite this is the one that has a really odd name but the label of it in the back says true love that's how you identify it when you actually look for it on amazon the cool things about this harness number one the canine equipment handle already has that feature. Fantastic. The front range really solid metal clip that the rough wear harness has, but a lot stronger because it's made out of metal. A D-ring or a full circle. So it already has those benefits 
it has adjustable clips, adjustable straps. It's built-in reflective material. As you can see, it's not gonna crack because it's sewn into the fabric itself. And on top here, the clip that the front range harness has, this is the front range, is built into a way more solid piece than the uh, rough wear. So the rough wear, har the rough wear harness looks like it has identical buckles on top, but look at the difference in the actual fabric. This is very thin and this is super strong. And this actually, this, this, this harness over here has been used a lot more and it hasn't even moved a little bit. It's just remained really, really solid. So it has all the great benefits of these harnesses that I just mentioned. The other very interesting factor is that when they pull on this harness, which we do use it as pulling, it doesn't give that choking effect that Kimari has with the front, with the rough wear harness. The rough wear harness, when she pulls on it, she's like, eh, eh. you know, it's really crazy. But on this one, for some interesting reason, on this front range, which is actually this way, the way it's built, she never chokes on it, so she can actually pull on it just fine, which is fantastic, and it has the front range clip, which is phenomenal. Both sides are adjustable too. It's great, beautifully padded inside. The outside here, the stitching that they've done here, they did a really good job with it not tearing. It's not as easy to, to chew through. This is breathable material inside. These have gotten wet, but they dry a lot faster than both of these other har harnesses. I'm actually really surprised which, with how well these harnesses have, have performed. Is it a perfect pulling harness designated for ski joring, bike joring, mushing, all of that? Probably not. But we really wanted an all around fantastic harness for an affordable price, which is, this is the most affordable out of all of them, and good color choices. And this turned out to be the best for all those reasons. This harness is absolutely phenomenal and our favorite choice right now. So then again, here we go. I just wanna show you guys a, a comparison, how this looks. I have nothing to hold this one by. So these are the biggest similarities to them. You can see the size differences and how they're built. This is completely differently built than these other two because they're meant for pulling. These are quite similar, but price and quality, this guy's a winner. With this being said, we'll show you guys how this one is used and we'll also show you guys how the canine equipment is used actually wearing it. This one, I don't think it's necessary at this point because it's very similar to this. And we'll show you how we actually use the front range and the back for pulling this harness so far as a winner. Now, we are, thank you, Yuna. You wanna add some to the soundtrack over here? You want some treats? And then we'll, we'll, we'll go for that walk, okay? Good babies. Good babies. What we do plan on doing is getting the actual mushing harness, the, the cross harness, the X harness, there's so many names for it. And what that is, is the special straps in the back. And that is designated for bike during skiing and all that good stuff I just mentioned earlier, which is great for Huskies. And we're gonna be doing a lot more digging and researching what's a good option. Obviously there's classic traditional versions of those that have been used in the Yukon and the sledding with dogs but we can do a lot of research which one works best but they only serve one purpose is actual pulling ski drawing bike drawing all that stuff we're talking about they're not going to be used for for everyday exercise and street walking because they're not meant for that so that's actually our ultimate goal to get the other harness too but in the meantime this harness highly recommended not just for huskies but for every every breed that i could think of i mean i you know i don't know the tiny little breeds but i know for other breeds this has performed incredibly well and the price is phenomenal if huskies can pull on it and kimari is a freaking little monster she pulls a lot on it this has been solid for all of them so it's great i highly suggest this harness in general now with this being said 
I hope this video is useful for you. Let us know in the comments below if you have any other ideas, any other thoughts when it comes to these harnesses, any questions, and also what other videos you'd like. We have so much knowledge and information, but we don't know what would be useful for you. So make sure you put that in the comment section below so we can create more videos of Husky Squad that will benefit you. So now we're gonna go and actually show you how these harnesses are used and we'll finish the video we'll see you guys in the next video don't forget to subscribe to our channel to click that like button if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys next time on husky squad